I was gonna be with you. Forever. Rest of my life. Traveling. In the TARDIS. I really need to get a move on with this Marvel Cinematic Hooniverse video before another showrunner points out all the things I'm going to say, but as I was going through the three-parter that is Turn Left, The Stolen Earth and Journey's End, I couldn't help but find myself wanting to make a video on Donna all by herself, or more specifically, her tragic exit, which still stands as the single best companion exit ever in my opinion. Most companions do get some form of happy ending, aside from Big Drick back in the day. I'll never know if I was right. Lol, what a drickhead. And whilst Donna doesn't die, spoilers for a fourth series of a show from 2008, she arguably gets it even worse. But that version of Donna is dead. Because if she remembers, just for a second, she'll burn up. You can never tell her. She gets to live, but is cursed with amnesia that she can never recover from. All of her memories with the Doctor, all of the wonderful places she went to, everything she accomplished, she doesn't get to keep any of it. The Donna Noble we come to love is the one that has to die so this other person might live. A part of her dies, and with it so does her growth across the series. But she was better with you. Don't say that. No, she was. It is so heartbreaking, and yet feels very true to life for Wilf to admit this. RTD makes this ending so soul destroying because he actively takes a character's arc and says hey fuck you it's all getting taken away and you have to deal with it it's frustrating every time watching the doctor have to wipe her memories and say goodbye oh come on doctor can't you do something come on there must be something you can do don't do this oh no oh Admittedly, the whole Dr. Donna reveal is still pretty bullshit. We spent the whole series wondering what the Ood meant, and it turns out it meant Donna melding with the DNA of a clone doctor in a two-way biological metacrisis that gives her all of his brainy powers. How did you work that out? You Time Lord. Part Time Lord. Part human. Uh, okay. I don't think anyone would have guessed that's where it was going, but Rusty Davies was never as good at ironing out the science fiction concepts as, say, Stephen Moffat, which is why a lot of things were resolved with a big old button. <laughs> But on the flip side, he crafted emotional moments with far more genuine resonance than Moffat ever did, and I think that's why ultimately his era is looked back on with more fondness. The ideas in the Moffat era were second to none, but the characters and their troubles was what really shined in the RTD era. It was much more human, like the respective Doctors of that age. And that's why, in spite of some flimsy techno babble, the result of the Doctor Donna really works. Do you know what's happening? Yeah. The performances really sell all of this and makes it feel so emotionally wrought. Tate gets to play on the mannerisms of Ten whilst also bringing a great foreboding sense of doom to the scene. Her character already knows what is happening to her and that denial, the way she pleads with him right to the very end and doesn't accept her fate, it makes it all even harder to swallow. No, no, no please. Please, no. Jacqueline King's Sylvia Noble was always a fantastic character because she never came around to the Doctor. No matter what you do, sometimes people won't always like you. She still is. She's my daughter. And maybe you should tell her that once in a while. It feels very genuine for this last exchange to be so bitter because she never really approved of Donna's travels and hates the idea that she was better from them. She somewhat softens by the end of Time's final scene, but I like that they never really see eye to eye. As I said, I think you should go. Wilfred Mott, Mr. Bernard Cribbins, what a legend. Donna had some great supporting players, and the grandpa, who would have oh so easily been a companion had he been young enough, is such a great idea for a character. The inverse of Sylvia, he was so happy to see Donna venture into the universe, and this exit sets us up nicely for the dynamic in End of Time, which really, really is very sweet and deserves its own video. We must look like insects to you. <laughs> I think you look like giants. The best moment from Tennant is when he's forced to give Donna a normal, friendly goodbye. Crushed, forced to say goodbye without any real closure on their friendship, it's really, really sad. And that's something you feel the weight of in those closing moments through Tennant's melancholic performance. Donna? I was just going. Yeah, see ya. I'll tell you what though, you're The final exchange between Ten and Donna is so good because it is the least dramatic thing possible. That's what produces that yearning in the audience, that desire to see the Doctor jump back from behind the door and fix it all like he's always supposed to. 
Of course he never does, and this half-hearted goodbye is heartbreaking because it's all they're ever going to get. Now whenever I rewatch Silence in the Library, Forest of the Dead, and River looks at Donna that way, I go cold. So why don't you know me? Where am I in the future? Especially for a character like River Song, when the Doctor isn't synced up with her knowledge or doesn't even recognise her, memories and stories are all she has. So to be confronted with someone that knows the Doctor, but will never get to cherish that, must be heartbreaking. She is presented with a similar fate of forgetting the Doctor through Tommy Wyomi shenanigans in the same story, and chooses death instead. It will mean I've never met you. Time can be rewritten. Not those times. Not one line. Don't you dare. Oh, a Doctor. Every night, Doctor. When he gets starved, I'll look up at the sky and think of you. I honestly think this is one of the sweetest moments in Doctor Who ever, brilliantly acted by Bernard Cribbins and David Tennant, and beautifully crafted by director Graham Harper and the team. That sad, lonely shot of Ten standing in the rain is unforgettable. You act like such a lonely man. But look at you. You've got the biggest family on earth. What about you now? Who have you got? I mean, all those friends of yours, they've all got someone else. The biggest team up in Doctor Who history, the Doctor surrounded by all his friends, and yet he still has to walk into that TARDIS alone and contemplate what it means to be a lonely god forevermore. RTD just gets it. I understand the appeal of past companions coming back, but I really think it's for the best if she doesn't. And I say that only because she is my favourite RTD companion. She should never come back. The sanctity of that ending is too great. If she came back and you undid it, you would risk spoiling it. There's a spoiler for you. And if you need an example of that, just look at the scenario with Clara and Twelve. They essentially did the same thing but in reverse. The Doctor forgets Clara and is unable to remember her. And then, a season and a special later, his memories are restored. Right in time for him to regenerate. Go back. You're in my head. And... Does it feel particularly satisfying? Does it make her exit any better? Does it give you any emotional impact? It's funny to think that when Catherine Tate joined the show, it was that comedian off that show, I forget the name, appearing in the novelty Christmas special. And who would have thought she would end up being one of the best companions of not only the RTD era, but who in of itself? The platonic rapport between Ten and Donna was a breath of fresh air after Rose and Martha, and lit up even the most maligned episodes. What do you think? Flapper or slapper? Flapper, you look lovely. After all the pain his ninth and tenth incarnations endured, Donna came into his life to form a real companionship. I loved them together, and much like Donna, I wish it could have gone on forever. I was gonna be with you. Forever. I would be really shocked if RTD brings back Donna, unless it's in a multi-doctor scenario where Ten and Noble are pulled out of their Series 4 time stream. Mahal. I don't ever expect him to reverse the status quo because to do so would squander that perfect ending. Mace Windu doesn't need to come back, Captain America doesn't need to come back, Donna Noble certainly doesn't need to come back. Sometimes death, even in fantasy, needs to stick. Sometimes that last page is what gives everything meaning. Donna Noble's companion exit, for me, is the most bittersweet, sad exit of all of Doctor Who. I still find it sad now just to think about, and I love re-watching those parts of the episodes because they are far and away the strongest parts of, well, particularly the, 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 the Dalek invasion half of that story. Turn left is a different beast entirely, which I'm gonna talk about in that Marvel Cinematic Universe video, and I cannot wait. And just to quickly cover the other main companion exits in order from the revival, Rose, yep, Defo the second best exit, even with the exit that follows in Journey's End, this one is up there in Doomsday. Martha, I actually kind of dig this scene, I really like that she just consciously decides enough is enough. I like the dialogue and the way she compares it to a very down-to-earth situation. So this is me, getting out. The Ponds, I don't think the Ponds had a terrible exit, but I think it could have been much better. I think if you have an opener like the 11th hour for these characters, they need a bit more fanfare at the end. The Angels Take Manhattan should have been a two-parter. Clara, the first two eps of the exit, top tier. Doesn't quite stick the landing. Bill and Nardole, 
it's just fine. They both only had a series and they get nice enough endings, but I really wish Moffat didn't fairy tale the cyber conversion, a scenario I can't have seen ITD reversing in the same situation, but that's just pure speculation, of course. Graham and Ryan, I couldn't tell you. What's your favourite companion exit? Let me know in the comments below. A big thank you to my full fat tier patron, Dr. Chike. If you'd like to donate money to my Patreon, you can find me at patreon.com slash fullfatvideos. If you'd like to find me on Instagram, you can find me at full underscore fat underscore videos. And if you'd like to find me on Twitter, you can find me at, you guessed it, at fullfatvideos.